being in Thailand as a 13 year old, it's sort of like in Home Alone, you know, where you go wild, you do whatever you want. You know, hanging out in the red light district, you know, going to bars, having pictures of, you know, whatever stupid mixed drink they had. Like, that's what I know. You know, I don't know culinary school. Like, I went to titty bars as a 13 year old and ate the food that they had out front. Eating and drinking in that way was really what informed like what we do now at Night Market. I'm Chris Yen Mamrung. I'm the chef and owner here at Night Market Song in Silver Lake here in Los Angeles. I always wanted a place that was like the neighborhood diner or like a neighborhood bar. I think of Night Market like equally as a place to go drink than a place that has good food. You know, the food at Night Market, I don't know, it spans a lot of different kind of traditions or a lot of different threads in Thai cooking. You know, it's true, like a lot of it is street food, but you're also gonna have a lot of, I don't know what you wanna call it, like home cooking sort of stuff. You know, we now have mall food. We have like strip club fried rice because you find it a lot in the red light district. First dish we got is som tam tot, right? So that means fried papaya salad. People have called it like our version of the blooming onion. But the truth is it's not our version really at all. It's a dish that I first had in a little town called Nakhon Batom. It's a little town sort of northwest of Bangkok and I have a lot of family there. Chris is sad his grandma. Oh fuck. Really? <laughs> It's crazy, just my my grandma and my dad popping in out of the blue. Not that it's unheard of, but you know, it's like they have no idea what we're up to right now and you know, they just popped in because they want to show their friend who's here from the East Coast, you know, what we're up to. So we're talking about like what they're gonna have. And he's like, oh you should show them the the loo, you know, like the blood soup and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, if he's down, you know, but nine out of 10 people are gonna be like, I don't want this, you know. So now we're gonna do loo, loo soup. Loo is a dish of raw blood. It's definitely not for everybody. Even in Thailand, it's usually, in terms of my family, you know, the older, sort of more derelict, drunk uncles, and that's the demographic for this sort of food. I don't know of any other restaurant in the States that makes this. I mean, you can die from eating the raw version, you know, but we do it anyways. My dad opened Talisai Thai restaurant on the Sunset Strip in West Hollywood in 1982. And he brought my grandma over to be the original chef. I think part of me, you know, like deep inside, I always felt like I would be involved in the family business in some way, but you know, you always want to get as far away as possible to like what you grow up with, I think. And I really wanted to be a photographer. So in 2000, I moved to New York and went to NYU for film school. Senior year at NYU, I saw a poster in one of the hallways for the films of Richard Kern. Man, this guy, you know, he was one of my heroes growing up. So I went, I thought I gotta ask him if I could work for him. So my first job for Richard was, uh, I would edit these old porno tapes that he had. First job out of college, you know, like 21 year old guy shooting naked chicks, like that was the best job I could ever ask for. And I ended up working for him for like four years. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. So we've been so slammed here recently. I don't know, I was just thinking it would be a nice time to go out with a couple friends. So we decided to go to some of our favorite spots around town. Sarah's my fiance, uh, we run the restaurant together. I always tell people it's a mom and pop operation. You know, she's the mom, I'm the pop. Camilla is, is a good friend of ours. Camilla writes for Eddie Wong's new show, Fresh Off the Boat. Adam Curlin is one of my best and oldest friends. He's like a documentary filmmaker and uh, he's just an all around playboy. He claims that he's settling down right now, but I don't buy it. Let's go. All right, first stop, we're going to Bar Ma, the fucking best, fucking number one restaurant in LA as far as I'm concerned. Yes. It's uh, my buddy Joseph Centeno, and this is his grandma's Tex-Mex. Hey, how's it going? Hey, 
Thanks for having us. So barma, it is a food that Joseph grew up with in San Antonio. It's Tex-Mex, but it's filtered through a guy who's cooked for every, like every big chef there is. But you know, he's cooking queso, he's cooking puffy tacos. He's making food that you want to have at 2 a.m., you know, drunk. You should pick a couple things and just let him send out a couple yeah. things. My name is Joseph Centeno. This is my restaurant. There's not a lot of Tex-Mex out here. And it's just really my take on the food that I grew up with which I guess is unique to me in that sense. How's it Get going? Get started a little bit of the queso and chorizo. Thank you. So this is your first time here? Yeah. I only tried queso for the first time this summer in Austin. Yeah. And I was like, this is why people love America. More food here. So I have the right. biscotto frito. Awesome. And then the crudo. Here's the fucking move. All right. You got to take this yeah. right here. Double queso. Uh -huh. right? You got to take some of this. And you got to make you know your own thing, you know what I mean? Oh my god. <laughs> it's delicious. It's oh, really man. Sexy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> So here we have braised beef belly. It's a really marbled beef belly that we uh, slow roast in chilies. We add a little bit of olive oil, queso fresco and chopped onion, a little bit of radish, a little bit of pomegranate, and some tomatillo. And we have the beef belly. Folks, how are we doing up here so far? Super good. Really good right now. Can we arrange a little uh, <laughs> Little mezcal situation or a couple oh, shots do you guys or something. Want to try a flight? We would love to do a mezcal flight, you know? Yeah. What is that, the lamb belly or the lengua? Beef belly. Oh. Beef belly. Yeah. Holy moly. I'm already destroyed. We need a reason to party. Yeah. Holy shit. Yes. Enjoy, guys. Fuck my life. Should we do shot number two? I love you guys. I'll see you in hell. <laughs> yeah. Well, after this, we'll definitely all yeah. be there. That's beautiful. Oh, come on. Oh, look at that. That's a beautiful thing right there. I'm done. I'm in pain, dude. I think you need to take another shot of your mess ball. Oh, we have one more shot. Come on, Dad. Fuck. That's buggy. I'm gonna first. Are you gonna fill your sippy cup with margarita? Turkey's yes. best margaritas to go. All right, now I'm ready to go. Let's go. <laughs> Do your Transformers noise for everybody. <laughs> now you do yours, baby. <laughs> what? what? Oh, I love you. Oh my god. Yeah, what did you think of the queso? The queso was fucking legit. Man, that mezcal flight. Yeah. Talk god, about that, it. Talk about it, Chris. It destroyed me. It's Next stop, uh, L and E. Get some oysters. Get some wine. Oh my god. Maybe hurl a little or something. Bobby hates me. <laughs> Have some fun. So next, uh, we went to l &E Oyster Bar, another one of my favorites. You know, I can't think of like a better room in LA. You know, it's like one of the top, just rooms in general, not even restaurants, just one of the top places to be. A little bubbly, a little rosé bubbly. Cremant de la Mieux. Dustin and uh, the guys who own it, you know, are super good friends and colleagues of ours. Salud. Thanks for having us, man. This is the best. Oh. Shit. <laughs> Whoa. Here we are. My God. That looks dangerous, dude. So we go, we go clockwise from 11, six kumi eyes from Baja. We have uh, six shagokus that are from Washington. Six moon shoals here from Massachusetts, and six uh, tomahawks from New York. Alani &E always has the best and freshest oysters in LA, and um, you think about something like oysters, and it's it's similar to sushi. You know, if you, you think about a sushi restaurant, like all these guys are pretty much getting their fish from the same market. But why is one sushi place better than another? You know, it's like it's. It's a bunch of different things. It's the selection of oysters, how they store the oysters, making sure they're shucked perfectly, you know, they're pristine. Just having the uh, classic sort of accoutrement, you know, like having the mignonette, having the cocktail sauce and the horseradish hits the spot. And I, I like that, you know, I like places that do quote unquote simple things, but done well. That's the sort of place I want to go to when I'm, when I'm out on the town. I think this is working. Where's Sarah? 
in the bathroom puking probably. <laughs> she she getting rid of she jettisoning. All right, we've had our oysters, we've had our rosé. I'm at half mast. Let's fucking go get some lap dances, dude. <laughs> oh man. Where's my princess? I have some sparkling water for you. Sparkling water. So she was sort of hurting at that point. You know, that amount of uh, tequila, you know, with the mezcal, with the beer that we had beforehand, and then, you know, like the bottle or so of Prosecco that we polished off before we left. I mean, that could do anybody in. That could do the best of us in. Let's go to Cheetahs, come on. Let's go. My little baby. All right, now we're off to Cheetahs. I'm gonna make it fucking rain like El Nino. Chris, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to mama seatbelt me. If we had a short, if we had a stop. We're yeah, good, we're go. good. Two dudes, five chicks, four dozen oysters, two bowls of queso. Uh -huh. Five pounds of meat. I'm fucking blitzed, dude. All right. Yeah, she's lying down. Uh, Sarah's hanging, you know. Sarah's gonna hang out for a little bit. I mean. It was the fucking it was mezcal, man. It was Chris's recommendation of us each having a mezcal flight of our own. <laughs> All right, let's just go see what's doing in here. <laughs> and the world's famous cheetahs, you know, I can't think of a better place to spend a Thursday night. I'm happily on fiance, you know, I'm about to get married next year, you know, and it's not even about going and, and sort of uh, creeping out or perving out on these girls, but. Yeah, Sarah loves it too, you know? Like, we go in together and we have a good time. Unfortunately, you know, she was out of commission at that point, but I knew that she wouldn't hold it against me if I went in and hung out with the gals, you know? And they're all her friends anyways, too, so it's all good. Man, I love titty bars, you know? I mean, I don't want to make it seem like I'm going in every week, because honestly, all I do is come into work, you know, I do my thing, maybe I have a drink after work and then I go home and then I do it all the next day. You know, going to the red light district when I was younger with all my friends, it was never about sleezing out, you know, it was never about like going because we were little horn dogs or whatever, you know, like we would go and just hang out with prostitutes, just drink with them and just, I don't know, just like have fun and, you know, party with them. and. I don't know, there was, they were like older sisters or something. They're cool chicks in general and they're doing, you know, they're doing what they do best, you know? Just like I try to do what I do, my best, and um, yeah, I love it, you know? I feel like Night Market could be a titty bar, just we don't have strippers, but we have everything else that goes with it, you know? Let's go, guys. Are you guys hungry at all, or what? I feel like I'm getting some shit. Yes. A, are you hungry yeah. at all? Is it a rhetorical question? Are you offering something? I'm offering Thai strip club fried rice buffet service. Yes. Really? Is it, is it on? Is it on your own naked body? It's on someone's naked body. Hold her, hold her, hold her, hold her, hold her, hold her. Hold her, hold her. All right, that was fucking some night, dude. Man. I don't know, I feel like I'm fucking young again. There's everybody, holy shit. Apparently there's a party happening here. <laughs> What's up, brother? What's up, man? After a couple hours of running around, even in my favorite spots, I thought I'd be either passed out in a pool of vomit or just, you know, like, uh, I, I don't know. But I, I somehow got the urge. I called up last minute. I texted a bunch of people, not even food people, you know, some restaurant people, but just all sorts of derelicts. I wasn't so much hungry myself, but when I see a room full of people ready to party, 
I'm thinking, how can I not feed them? They're in my house. All right, I'm gonna go cook. I think there was 50, 60 guys up in here last night, and there's no way I was gonna do that by myself. So I had to enlist my good friend Noah. He cooks at Bloodzos. I put Adam on the wings. He's not as well versed. He's not as skilled in the kitchen as Noah. He's more of a, you know, he's an art guy. I figured, let me give him something kind of low impact. So I told him to fry up some chicken wings, and he was able to handle that. Food, food, food. All right, who's hungry? We need some of that Maggie sauce, baby. Someone hit a fucking thing, man. All right. Yeah. Hey, welcome. Welcome, everybody. Um, hey, we're glad to have you all here. You know, we're glad to be in the neighborhood. Um, and we make a fried rice. We fry up some chicken wings and we make up these little wiener blossoms. Everybody grab a plate. I set up a little buffet because all these knuckleheads here, you know, it's not about to be a sit down meal. So we set up our own little stripper buffet and we had everybody just help themselves. So good. So fucking good. Super tasty. Hey, overall, I think it was a success because people had smiles on their faces, people were drunk, people were partying. Having that strip club fried rice kept a couple people from vomiting on my floor. I think anytime I come back to the restaurant in the morning and there's no vomit to clean up, that's sort of a success. Seems like it's really good. Really good. Yeah. <laughs> it's good, man. Yeah, I can't complain. I can't complain. Nice work, nice work. Yeah, yeah. awesome place. Very impressive.